we have one final feature reader for you. Representing 12B. Dana Chu was crafting metaphors as a zygote. Uh, as an embryo, she began breaking lines in unexpected places for dramatic effect and to open up meaning. So by the time she was a fetus, she was already pretty widely published. Um, now that she's been born and exists, she's able to share her work with us. Pretty lucky. Please welcome our esteemed Madam President of the Poetry Club, representing 12B. You know her, you love her. Give it up for Dana, folks! Okay, so hi guys. Hope you guys have had a really good night so far um, and have enjoyed listening to all the poetry. So I have three poems for you guys today and I hope that they stir up three different kinds of, or more, kinds of emotions within you. Yeah, so this first one is um, called Pencils and it is uh, based on how last year I dared someone to write a poem about pencils and you might not know who you are, but this is for you. There's something so attractive about pencils, how everything they touch reeks of them afterward, how they lose something of themselves each time they kiss paper. Like pencils, I told you, we are only as much as the marks we leave behind. It was March. We had so much left to give, so we gave it. See, the heart of a pencil does the writing, but most of it does the holding together, a cushioned grip, something to steady your hands on an anonymous, convenient sort of love. That year, I'd come over just to rifle through your pencil box in the lulls of our conversation. But it was all so mechanical until 3 a.m. darkness cloaked your voice with emotion. We stayed up, letting our minds run messy, looking for a way to fit together, hearts leaden with consequence. I want to write a prayer for every time we use those little pencil erasers despite the risk of smears blooming ugly like bruises. We knew it would be ruinous, but never expected it. Another thing, with pencils, there is nowhere to go but down. We raced each other to nubs, all edge and no point, typical stuff. Everyone knows fast writing only gets smudged in its brilliance, but by God if we didn't try. seniors in the crowd tonight <laughs> and we've all been through the stress of applying to college along with Mrs. Roberts who also experienced probably twice as much stress from this process as well <laughs> so um, I was going through some of my college supplements and I decided to make a found poem from some of the things that were in my college supplements so here it goes one Somewhere inside my four-year-old fingers is the sweet melody of someone else's victory. These rigid joys, how inexplicable, how magnetic. We're just trash-sorting teenagers, forcing ourselves to stomach hundreds of Merriam-Webster's dictionaries. Two, I don't think the world will ever forgive cilantro and everything it dares to become. <laughs> Three, a 14-year-old slave named Celia was hanged for murdering her rapist. I ask way too many questions. What's the difference between a tragedy that makes the news and one that never gets to? My handwriting was its own foreign accent, sharing too many complicated inheritances. Four, there's still so many people I can't wait to be someday, filling my cardigan pockets deep like Miley Cyrus's. Once, we collected discarded thank you cards and a fountain of inside jokes. Five, how much better Comic Sans would look if redesigned as Comic Serif. No more undercurrents of silly string, no more tangled messes of connections that crumble rather than lead to answers. For you guys today is a poem that I wrote on a Friday afternoon in 10th grade. Um, some of you have heard this poem before. I performed it at our 
first slam poetry competition in school. Um, yeah, and hope you enjoy. This is Ouija Board with Dead Girls. If I were an ice cream flavor, what flavor would I be? You say Rocky Road, I say vanilla. Ouija Board says redemption. This is a poem full of second chances and regrets and all the times I've thrown myself on the funeral pyres of those who have left me for the last time as if tears didn't feed a flame. But girls like me need flames to feel alive and there's a kind of tree that only releases its seeds in a forest fire. You have always been the forest fire and exhilaration is enough to forget about pain sometimes, pain that is evolutionary passed down from parent to child, from mitochondria to mitochondria, because we have always felt the need to be more than the powerhouses of ourselves. Listen, none of this will matter one day. Recently, objects in the mirror are sadder than they appear, and all my friends are either happy or suicidal. Like on a beach after a rainstorm, or and never looking back one day, will leave this all behind. But listen, all these dead girls look like me trying desperately to communicate some kind of emotion in undecipherable, ruined languages. Anyway, Ouija board says my favorite flower is a dandelion. It would take a million years to count each dainty petal for the final answer of he loves me or he loves me not. And maybe that's what I wanted all along to be in limbo, always being on the brink of something so incredible and so incredibly doomed, my mother taught me not to wish on dandelions. Everything beautiful ultimately comes to consequence, and my dear, if I have not learned that lesson well, forgive me. You don't believe that time heals everything. Of course, we have never succeeded at resurrecting the dead, except in guilt and Ouija boards, and voicemail saying, wherever you go, remember me. But have you ever seen anything as beautiful as hope? After all, you were named after the first chirp of a bird at dawn, and in the face of a rising sun, even the world refuses to burn. But we've all been power hungry, wanting to control our own narratives, burn down a house or two, no wonder we all end up pyromania setting fires to bridges in the name of freedom, in the name of love, each explosion carrying its own firework legacy. Can we get another round of applause for your second half of the game, poets, please? Thank you guys so much. Um, we have a couple of... Uh, Secret tricks up our sleeve.